welcome to another edition of Mercedes Records Beauty Videos while her four month old baby takes a nap. But I really couldn't not film this video for you. We're gonna be doing a review of the February Beauty Heroes box featuring Earthwise Beauty. Since Beauty Hero started carrying this brand, I, it's probably been about two years, maybe, maybe only a year. Everyone has wanted to see a monthly subscription box featuring Earthwise. This is such a beloved brand in eco beauty. Uh, they've been around for a very long time, initially started, I believe on Etsy, in this sort of this very cute eclectic packaging that i remember very well i hadn't tried the products um at that time when they when they were in the original packaging but i still remember them really really vividly so fast forward all of these years later i now have very deep and broad experience with the brand ava zahn the formulator is a friend of mine she's been on my podcast i have so much respect for her and it's definitely one of my most favorite and trusted brands in the eco beauty space so excitingly one of the products in this box is a new launch it's the isadora face balm this is now the fourth balm in the earthwise beauty range and the other product they have included is the black locust firming concentrate which is one of five different face oils that earthwise does i think that ava has been really putting out beautiful releases over the last couple years uh, most recently the three roses mist which i love uh, Imhotep's face mask, the Paloma cleansing oil. Those are the ones I'm thinking of off the top of my head. I have done so much previous content on Earthwise, so I'll make little uh, verbal bookmarks and include links below uh, where you can go watch further. And then I pulled just a couple of other Earthwise products that I'm actively using. I've tried everything in the brand but i'll show you some of my current staples so let's talk about isadora first it's a 30 mil jar retails for a hundred dollars i i don't really want to use the word heaviest but it's the balm most geared towards very dry skin i think of the other three which are yasuni green leaves and tigress they market the green leaves balm which is a coconut oil based balm as being the one for dry skin i personally like using that one as a cleansing balm it works so well the coconut oil works really well as a cleansing balm on me uh, but it's true that none of the balms are really for dry skin they decided to fill that niche the balm is actually named after isadora duncan the very well-known modern dancer. That was really the influence, I think, for a lot of the scent profile and just the qualities of the balm and the experience of the balm being this really interesting combination of grounded but ethereal. So right away, the texture and the scent of the product really do jump out at you. It has a very smoky quality, leathery, smoky type of smell. And it has that sort of telltale whipped kind of texture, predominantly, I think, coming from the shea butter. So some of the superpower ingredients are baobab oil, carrot seed oil, kupuku butter, unrefined shea butter, prickly pear seed oil. I don't need to go on at length about the impeccable sourcing that Earthwise undertakes. They're one of my most trusted brands in terms of who they go to for ingredients and have very very exacting standards they'll pull products off the shelves if there's an ingredient that uh, is not up to quality and they're looking for another vendor or something like that this also does have tetra c in it which is the form of vitamin c that a lot of brands have been using because it doesn't induce that dryness that a lot of vitamin c type of products can do um so this is really meant to be either a daytime balm if you're someone that's kind of out in the elements and is looking for a really protective layer or a night balm so i may be in the minority but for me this is more of a daytime balm uh, for nighttime i still personally really prefer yasuni which we can talk about in a little bit. That's really my favorite of the four balms. So a bit about Black Locust, which I have reviewed pretty extensively elsewhere. I did a whole video on the five oils in Earthrise's range. So Ruby, Rosa, Magical Babasu, Ferns and Moss, and Black Locust. Now, in terms of light to heavy, this is on the lighter end. Uh, interestingly, just in terms of texture and absorbability, whereas Magical Babasu and Ferns and Moss are kind of the heavier, more emollient oils, uh, Ruby, Rosa, and Black Locust are more 
quickly absorbed and I would say Black Locust is definitely the most results focused formula in the oil category. So again, I can see why Beauty Heroes included this. A 15 milliliter bottle of this retails for 86. Uh, this has acai, calendula, green heartwood, lupine seed, sea buckthorn, and bakuchiol. I can't remember where I had the reaction, but the first time I tried this oil a couple of years ago, it was almost like a spiritual experience. I was very reticent to try it because of the bakuchiol. It's just an ingredient that I still, to this day, don't really like. I was thinking about this before I sat down to film. I would love, in my ideal world, I would have the Isadora Balm and the Black Locust without the Tetra C and without the Bakuchiol. And or I would try them that way and then compare it to the products with those ingredients in them and see if they really make a noticeable result. Because there's just so many other amazing ingredients. You know, I don't really think Black Locust would be missing much if the Bakuchiol were not in it personally, but that's just me. And I'm very much an outlier in eco beauty. I know people probably think it's annoying and that I have too much of a naturalist stance on skincare. Um, and it really is biased towards, you know, my own skin preferences. I just don't want anything that's going to throw my skin out of balance. Um, and ingredients like that used over time definitely can tend to do that for me. So I just tend to avoid them. But the whole experience of the black locust oil is something to behold. If you have never tried it and you decided to get this box, I feel like you're in for a big treat because it's it truly is an experience. I haven't tried layering these two yet, so Black Locust with Isadora on top, a real heavy hitting wintertime skin combo. Uh, Black Locust for me is would mostly be a nighttime product. And even, like I said, even though Isadora is I think being promoted mostly as a nighttime balm, for me, this would be more of a daytime product. The reason that I like Yasuni as my preferred everyday nighttime, I actually can use this daytime or nighttime. Everything about this product speaks to me. I really love it. And it was not a love at first use. And I know that this is not the point of the box, but I just wanna give you comparative points. Um, to talk about these in particular. So you can see them side by side. Yasuni is my dream product because, um, well, it's essential oil free, which is not a prerequisite for me at all. I love wisely used essential oils, but it relies solely on fruit oils for the very gentle resurfacing, I guess you could say exfoliating properties that it yields. And after just one use of this, I feel like I've gotten just like a very gentle working with my skin's kind of inherent capacity to turn over is not really what I want to say but you know what I mean you just get like a bit of a refresh and it's so gentle and in sync with what your body is doing anyway and that's why I love it I love the scent it kind of People have said it smells a bit like banana leaves. I don't think I really know what banana leaves smell like, but I don't know, it's just kind of that plant compound type of smell. Um, definitely different textures. So Isadora is actually a little bit more melty and definitely has more of that whipped texture, whereas Yasuni is a little bit more putty-like and it requires just a bit more warming up and working on. And in fact, I do think a supplier of a particular oil or butter in this did change, and but I haven't noticed an, a change in the texture uh, at all. And in fact, it might be a little bit smoother um, than it used to be. And the color might be slightly different. But anyway, I've gone through, I think, at least two jars of this over the last couple of years. I've used Isadora overnight. I've used it during the day. I just personally like, I, and especially with the addition of the Tetra C, if it's going to be in there, that's something that I would prefer to use during the day. I'm not really out in the elements, so to speak. I'm in Kentucky. It's kind of been a gross winter here, like way more snow and way colder than I thought it was gonna be in Kentucky still better than Chicago. I like this balm, style of balm, and I think shea butter is just more, I, it's not my personal favorite in a balm, but for daytime, I do think that it's gorgeous. Black Locust, I think if you work your way through this bottle, use it over the next four, five, six months, I think 
primarily a PM product and you're comfortable with Bakuchiol, Earthwise is really one of the only brands that I would use a Bakuchiol product from with any regularity, just because I really trust her sourcing and how she composes formulas um, instead of just throwing it into something, which I feel like a lot of brands do. And I do think my aversion to it also just has to do with the fact that it's been a very trendy ingredient in um, skincare formulations over the last couple years and is really trying to mimic a lot of the anti-aging rhetoric in skincare which I know that we're all just over for the most part but obviously people have a wide range of needs in skincare and I just love that Earthwise you know it has products for people that are very minimal and not, don't really care as much about a particular result um, and then they do have products in their range that are a little bit more heavy hitting and are geared towards that demographic of people who are uh, interested in that in that type of skincare experience so of course you know i think this is a wonderful box and is totally worth picking up especially if you've never experienced earthwise i was talking in my dms with some people who uh, have a little more experience with the brand and I was kind of we were kind of talking about what would your dream box be if you were to curate this I was surprised and happy to hear that quite a few people were interested in one of my hero products Ambrosia du Serato I put this in my best of beauty 2021 video this is definitely a top five probably a top three Earthwise product for me and it's so unassuming and subtle and simple I can understand why it didn't make it in a beauty box and it's definitely I would say more of like a spring and summertime product so it's not really wouldn't make a ton of sense in a winter skincare box even though I use this in the winter time in the morning it's just so amazing. So definitely this would be in a dream box curation for me. So honestly, my if I were to have curated this box, it probably would have been Yasuni and Ambrosia du Serato, but you can't really beat a new release in a box. I just think that that's always really exciting. A couple of the other products that are in my rotation right now, green leaves, like I said, and I really like this as a cleansing balm. I don't like it at all, really as a leave-on balm. Um, in fact, it actually seems to leach a bit of moisture out of my skin as a leave-on but as a cleansing balm uh, the coat like i said the coconut oil is just so good the scent of violet is so nice at the end of the day so it's an expensive way to use this it, it's really not meant to be used as a cleansing balm but it certainly is a beautiful experience and then the other two face oils that i use really regularly and would reach for more than black locust personally are magical babasu which is probably the most emollient oil that they do um, it would be the oil equivalent uh, of isadora just in terms of how intensely uh, it's meant to hydrate and moisturize the skin i think creamy cashmere like if my skin seems like it needs an overnight boost i will go for this over yasuni yasuni is more if my skin is normal feeling normal but looking a bit dull and i just kind of need like a little pick me up that's when i would go for yasuni dry and parched i would go for magical baba soup personally and then rosa is just a, such a good product especially for pregnant postpartum uh, if you're not using really much skincare at all, but you still want to keep up with a routine that's delivering nutrition to the skin and uh, results, uh, it's just a whole fruit rosehip seed oil. I would say ditch the pie rosehip seed oil, which has a tendency to actually be rancid upon opening. Uh, and this is just insane quality it's so good highly recommend everyone have a bottle of that around honestly and then i am just about to open up another bottle of the passion eye serum i'm finishing up the kahina prickly pear seed roller ball and i love this as uh, an under eye treatment this is also a really nice uh, essential oil free face oil for normal sensitive skin i would say so again good for pregnancy postpartum along with Rosa, if you wanna have uh, those sort of oil options in your routine. And the other product that I feel just like never really gets enough love, but is truly epic. And I understand why it doesn't because it's work to do, but the Celine Facial Steam, like that would be another amazing box. The Celine Facial Steam and the Sun God Mask, or maybe like two of the masks, Catharsis and Sun God. Imhotep is, in my opinion, not as ideal for sensitive skin. It definitely can kick up redness. 
uh, but probably better for people with a little bit more congested skin, I would say. I mean, you just have to look at this to see. The, the beauty of this really translates into the experience. So you put some of this in a glass bowl, fill it with boiling water and tent your head over it, steam your face, do a mask. It's the closest thing to going out and having someone work on your skin and you can do it at home in under an hour the whole thing the whole routine and i actually have a video that i made for patreon i think a year and a half ago a complete earthwise skincare routine from cleansing to steaming to masking to treating um so that's on patreon it's just part of the archive of like 60 videos that are there that i've done over the last three years um and that's just at the seven dollar a month level and you also would get access to all the bonus podcast episodes i've done i love talking about this brand i love hearing about the different ways that people mix and match products or how these products work on different skin types i love that earthwise really caters to a wide range of preferences. Um, I didn't even talk about some of the more intense products that are not great for sensitive skin, in my opinion, like Nap in the Meadow or Resiliency. Um, I find those difficult to use personally. I'm much more towards the sort of sensitive, just keeping my skin content end of Earthwise. And I would love to hear from those of you that have do have very dry skin or eczema or are really looking for a product like Isadora. I would love to hear from you. I'd also love to hear how anyone that's a little bit more combination or congested, how it fares because it's non-comedogenic. So I think that really anyone could benefit from using it. I think it would make a beautiful makeup primer. The smoky scent is really nice, I think, for this time of year, sort of amber smokiness. And yeah, okay, I'm stopping. But I did also wanna update you because I've gotten some questions asking if I'm doing a Beauty Heroes retrospective. I need to remember when I stopped, but I am due, due to do another one. But it's taking me a little longer because there were whole boxes that I just didn't try because I was pregnant. So I still have to try the Fivena decollete treatment. I'm currently trying the Lil Fox box from over the summer, the Marshmallow Poof and the Acid Glow. Not really products for me, I'll be honest. This just burned my skin a bit last night. I mean, not anything crazy. I'm a little afraid to use this. Although I, people told me that it's really not, it's not intense and it does give a really nice effect so i'll try that a couple times but anyway i'm basically playing catch up with boxes that i had set aside and i can't i think i have just one or two more boxes to wrap testing and then i'll probably get that out film that over the next couple months and it may be like a 14 month retrospective or something you know what i mean so that i can keep keep current but yes i am planning to do that this is my eighth year of working with beauty heroes i can't believe it here i am like two kids later uh come a long way from when i started my channel filming and god knows what apartment i was in at the time thank like, you guys so much for being here i'm aiming for two videos a month and i've started to do lives on instagram which are really fun and i'm trying to do every other week so like two maybe three a month if you're not on instagram i am planning to repost the lives to patreon However, Instagram is always going through updates and changes, so I was not able to save the last one that I did. You can still stream it on Instagram. I'm just not able to grab and download the footage to, to put it on Patreon, but I'll make sure that I do it for the next one that I do. And I'm, act, I'm doing actual content during these lives. They're Q and A's, but like I had just done a small Mercedes shops and a recent beauty favorites. And I'm gonna be doing a makeup empties probably next week and just like trying to keep up with content that way so that things don't get held up in the editing process. Stay tuned for changes, organizational structural changes to my podcast. Um, and if you wanna keep up with episodes and you miss them, I'm currently really just uploading to the Patreon feed right now until I really strategize and figure out the main feed and how to keep that organized. So this is perfect timing because the baby's just waking up. <laughs> I'll make sure to include a link down below if you want to pick up this box, if you've gained something from my content or my review. Thank you guys so much, and I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.